Hello, my name is Belinda Linhart and I am a mixed media artist and today I'm just going to um, talk you through a little video that I have um, which I created when I um, recently received Jane Davenport's Butterfly Effect book. Um, so if you don't know Jane Davenport, which so many people do and I'm sure you do, um, make sure you head on over to uh, Jane's website at www.janedavenport.com and she has some great videos on um, how, what the Butterfly Effect book is, why she named it the Butterfly Effect book um, and some really great ideas on how she uses it and, and some other people are on there too giving demos. Um, but I thought I would just uh, uh, give a little bit of demo on, on how I'm using it. So, um, yeah, uh, I have, you have to forgive me, I have forced, for, fast forwarded this um, video a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to watch. Um, this first part of the video, I'm just showing you the butterfly effect book itself. Um, as it comes, it comes as a beautiful flat canvas. Um, and it allows you to be able to decorate it however you like. Um, I've just taken out the little elastic because I'm going to paint that, that um, well I have actually painted that the canvas as it comes with a gesso and the gesso that I show there is a, a Liquitex um, gesso which is my preferred one for art journaling and um, in general. Um, and at the beginning here, I am just showing you bits and pieces that I have gathered from, from Jane's um, books. I decided that um, I wasn't able to get a lot, of the, a lot of the supplies because Jane had sold out, but I was able to get these cool little pockets which, which come, and, and I'm just showing you there the water, watercolour um, paper that comes supplied. Uh, and then I created my own paper. So what I've got there is basically bits of old scraps of bits of watercolour paper that I had in some different sizes that I'm just popping into um, one of those little pockets. Um, I've also got a little washi tape holder which Jane sells them but um, again um, she had sold out. So I just created my own from like a little bit of a plastic sheet that I had um, in... Um, from an old stationery, um, like an old diary. Actually, it was a diary from last year and it had a plastic cover. So I just cut that to size to fit the butterfly effect um, width and wrapped my washi tape around it. And, um, and you can see there that um, they fit nicely into that little pocket. I'm not sure what else I'm going to put in that little pocket just yet, but um, I've just started by doing that. You might have seen there before, I've also got a little swatch with some Jane Davenport um, watercolour samples on there. I received that. Um, I've been a fan of Jane's for many years, so that's something that I have had um, in my little supply for a few years now. And surprise, surprise, how lovely that it just fits in that little pocket as well. So that, that's like a lovely little thing that I've got there. Uh, next I'm showing you, um, it's a bit of a old bit of uh, acrylic paint um, on canvas paper that I, I painted a little while ago and my idea is it's, not, it's a nice thick little bit of cover that I wanted to um, incorporate around my calendar. Um, so when you buy the Butterfly Effect book, you can also download, Jane's made this fabulous like week to week um, calendar that you can print out and put into your, um, put into your, to your, into your book. And um, however, like for me, that wasn't quite working exactly how I needed it to. I don't work on a week to week basis. I'm, I've, I've got like a daily to-do list so trying to fit everything in one week page wasn't going to work for me so I just made up a little other little sheet there which has um, a month so it's a month per view it also has a thing for my 90 day goals my 60 day goals and my um, 30 day goals 
It's got a little area for um, doodling and up the top there it's got the month so I'll be able to print out these as, as, I, as I need them and put the month on there and I've printed it on some really nice marker paper so I may put another um, shot, of, shot of this once I <clears throat> colour it in but um, for now um, I, I've just put my print out there and, and it's got an intention area for me to set my intention for the month. I like to do that each month before I start um, and a few little other things. So you, you can see that there and um, the great thing about these books is you can just slot them in and out. You can change things around as, as, you, as you'd like um, and it allows you just to you know tailor it really to what suits you and and you know how how it's going to work for you so that's also oh that's a thing from my old diary um i found this little pocket from officeworks which was a couple of dollars that fitted like not quite but quite nicely in there for little bits of collage and papers and things that i might um like to include in my book um, so this is just the organising for me, working out, cutting things to size and working out what's going to go in. Um, and so for this next step, I'm starting to work out what I'm going to um, paint on my background. And, and I'm just showing you a few bits of the different paints that I have. I have a wide variety of paints. Um, that's the Matisse structure paint that I have there. I have those little, I have the Liquitex paints, which I absolutely love. They're so buttery. Um, and I have some matte craft paints there as well that, that I've also got there. And actually a bit of house paint, um, which I'm, I don't think I actually end up using, but I do use that regularly in, in my, in my, in my um, pieces and and there I'm just filling up my spray bottle with a bit of um I have a little demister and this is my palette um, for those of you who have been to one of my classes you will know that um, this is my favorite little thing to do for my palette I just have an old um, biscuit tin lid and I cover it with aluminium foil and just give it a bit of a spray whenever I'm doing acrylic work and that just um it's really because I'm quite lazy and don't like washing my palette. Um, I do have a craft mat underneath that I sometimes use as well and just use it directly onto the table. But the the foil means that I, I actually don't have to clean up at all. I can just scrunch up that bit of foil afterwards and throw it in the bin. So um, it's a little bit me being lazy. Um, but it was a tip given to me by my auntie who is an artist and um, I've used it ever since so that's that's my little tip and this is me just getting ready um, getting all my things um, I think I'm missing I'm looking for a spatula or something to scoop up that white paint at the moment I think I decided oh, I'm just going to use that the brush so um what I like to do when I'm doing any kind of a background is kind of put down the white first and choose probably two or three colors maximum to start with. And that's usually like a, a light color and a dark color minimum. Um, and I start just getting down in all different strokes the, um, the white paint. Uh, I really don't have any idea of what I'm going to do at this stage, like which is in a lot of my mixed media, um, you know, artworks. When I start with a background, I'm just kind of putting a dark area, um, a light area and a dark area, and then blending them together with the paint that is already on the on the um, on the surface. So in this case, on the on the canvas, and you can see as I'm working, I'm brushing off the excess paint on my little bit of um, um, paper towel and I'm picking up the paint from one area and bringing it up into the other and just using a like a crisscross action. Um, it it kind of blends in and makes it a smooth finish. Uh, I don't always paint like this but this is something that I do do quite regularly. And this is a beautiful colour, I think it's called Parchment by Liquitex, this one. It's one of my favourite colours to use. It, it's kind of um, 
beigey but a bit greeny and it looks a little bit I noticed as I got to about this stage that I've kind of created a bit of water and sand type look which wasn't intentional but I do do a lot of that in my in my artwork so um, it didn't surprise me really um, but yeah so and and bringing a bit of that that yellowy or browny color up into the the water um, and because it's a bit yellowy it makes it it makes it almost it's a bit hard to see on the video but kind of a bit tealy like there's a bit of an aqua -y color that starts to emerge particularly as I blend more and more with my paints um, so this is just to show you a little bit about how I work with my backgrounds um, these could be any colors that you're using uh, for me it's these these blues whites kind of like the beach I live near the beach so the beach always inspires me for my colors um, yeah and then I just get to pretty much the stage where I'm, I'm happy with the blending and it needs to dry a little bit before I can do much more um, so I think I wipe a little bit and I, I just add a little bit more areas to make it, make that gradation from one color into another a little bit smoother um, and then we move on to um, I've added a few little drops on there and I'll leave it to dry I think um, and then the next part of the video is when I come back so once it's dry I can uh, do some stenciling uh, this is like you know I think I worked out as I started to do this this, this was, was a bit, you really didn't really need to see me untangle all my stencils this was a new way that I had to keep my stencils um, and um, I think this one of the stencils that I use here is actually one of Jane's stencils that she has and another one is um, by another mixed media artist um, and I have my little applicator there that I use for stenciling you can use a brush uh, and I do use a brush often but for this I wanted a very clean um, you know a very clean stencil stamp um, and so for that I always use like the the spongy applicator that I have there um, I think that's actually from Jane as well back in the day um, she I'm not sure if she still sells them or not but um, I know she uses them so I think that's her um, so before I get started I'm just here realizing that I need the color a little bit stronger down the bottom so I just add a little bit of the a bit more of that parchment color back onto the page and again with the the blues so here I'm just putting some little abstract dots around in a darker color than what is there uh, I'm sticking to this same kind of color palette um, I do add pops of pink um, in there a bit later but I still wanted to keep it quite blue so I do kind of um, restrict which colors I'm using and, and move on to the to the gold and a bit of white and I'm just gonna fast forward this part of the video a little bit more um, I do know that somewhere in this video um, I had recorded it and it dropped out so um, my apologies for that there's bits of this bits of that you don't see um, but you can see after the dried effect of, of what I'm doing I, I've included a stamp um, and one, once this stenciling part has been finished I then leave it to dry again so again I've got like another stage of drying in there I just love those 
white sorry about that I just love those white um, gel pens I use them all the time in my work um, it's just I like to draw on top of paint so I'm just drawing little random patterns um, I have a stamp there that's got kind of like my signature on it that I've had from another project so I've just stamped that on with some ink um, in there as well So here I'm thinking that I just need a little bit more variation up there um, and um, I just kind of blend that out. I think I decided that I didn't want that after I started so I kind of smudged it with my finger and went oh no that's not working you know which is what happens and I think I then just went over it with a darker colour again so that's, um, that's all part of the, the process. So here's where actually you didn't get to see what I'd drawn, um, where the video cut out. Um, I'll just go quickly here on the video and show you things that I used. I, I used some gold paint, I used my little brushes, I, I drew, I used, that's the paint that I used for her skin. Um, and this is a matte paint that I've used all there for her dress. Um, and uh, I've got this shimmery little powder that I just bought the other day that I was experimenting with and you can see a little bit of that. I just mixed it with a bit of water and put that on there. And then of course Jane's pen, her incredible pen. I, I use that to draw every or draw the girl. And the great thing about this pen is that um, you can smudge, the, smudge it out a little bit with a bit of water and it just looks beautiful. Um, I really wanted to do a girl which was a bit similar to Jane's style because I feel like it kind of was inspired by her, all my drawing and you know the whole thing is just a little bit Jane inspired so um, I love the movement of the hair and all those things so so this one was definitely um, just a cutie, little cutie that I did. Um, that's my stamp that I have that I'm just showing you there and some waterproof ink that I use just so that it doesn't smudge when I put more stuff over it. Um, and then I used a bit of ink, acrylic ink I'm just showing you that I, I just sort of went around the edges of things with that dark blue. I think I did a um, turquoise ink in there as well. And then I put everything, a matte medium over the top of the whole thing. And that's because I wanted to go in there with those pencils. Um, I do like to finish my works off with a bit of pencil here and there. It's not so easy to see on this video. Um, but I, yeah, the matte medium allows me to put that pencil on there because some of those paints that I'm using are not matte paints so they do have a bit of gloss to them and it means that that pencil doesn't stick. Um, I'm sure Jane's got some wonderful paints over at her shop that I think are fantastic but um, I use these ones because these are just the ones I have and um, I'm trying to use what I have before I buy even more. Um, yeah, so this is just me with the finishing touches. Um, I'm just going in there with a bit of pen, pencil. I think I finish off with some pen, some paint pens. A little more highlight on her um, her hair, and just some little dots here and there. It's really just playing at this point. Like this for me is where I'm just seeing, seeing where I think it needs a little bit of something and just giving it a little bit of, little bit of a tweak. Um, those Liquitex, that's a Liquitex paint pens, um, which are my new favorite, one of my favorite things um, available from Officeworks. Um, again, it's a little bit hard to see on this video and you know, this is this video is a bit of a test video for me in terms of. Um... So next, I'm moving on just to a little quote that um, 
I have adopted for 2017. Um, it just says, you have always been enough. And that's a special, um, that quote kind of has special meaning for me. It's something that um, has, I need to remind myself regularly um, of. And so I'm just putting that on, on the front of my little um, booklet here, just so that I can be sure to be reminded of it whenever I need to look at my book. Um, and then I move on to giving everything a little bit of a spray. Um, that was the, uh, it's like a bit of a glitter that, um, again, you probably can't see it so on the, um, on the video here, but it just puts a nice little shimmer over everything. So it does admittedly um, blur a bit of the pen work that I have on there and I do go back and touch that up a little bit later just on her eyes and her um, her mouth and stuff just to make that a bit clearer but I thought that it gave it a really nice little effect and so the last part of this video is just um, me showing you how I then put my book together um, with the elements that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, I just get that string back in there. Um, I realise later obviously that I've done that the wrong way. That's just me. You know, I swap that around. Um, this is a li the little pocket book that I was telling you about. I have little collage pieces that I've cut out in there. Um, I have the Jane's um, watercolour thing and they just slip lovely under that little um, and I don't use all the pockets um, and all the different things I actually would like to get some more elastics so next purchase will be some more elastics so I can put some more little areas in there but for now um, this is just me working out okay where's where am I going to put what and how are they all going to fit? I've just got a little bit of marker paper in there that I am reminding myself I want to have a play with. Um, so that's what that's there for. This is my little range of miscellaneous colours and um, papers. And, and the paper was too big, so I just folded it to fit the size. Um, and I think when I actually do it, that will be really cute. It'll just have a little flap that'll fold in and out that I can do some work on. Um, but, you know, it's just using what I had. Um, it's great. It's great. You know, I've got lots of little off cuts of paper, so that just works in great with me. Um, so then I think I just realized I want it in a, a different configuration to how I had it <laughs> so and I thought if I put the calendar in there and then I've got that little flap to flap flip over take that piece of paper out and it's all gonna it's all gonna work and I'm gonna do some little doodles on those and put them somewhere else so it's all gonna fit in great So that's how I've got it all sorted and beautiful. It all fits and I'm super happy. And I can't wait to, she has some more covers in stock and I can get my um, clear plastic cover um, for that. Um, and I'm really looking forward to using this and, and coloring in my calendar and, and filling it with all my personal bits and doodles over the next month or so. Um, it should be really good. Um, so there you go, that brings me to the end of my little video on my butterfly effect book. I hope you enjoyed it and um, if you're interested you can visit my website for some more, um, see other parts of my work which is at Creative Heart. So it's www.creativeheart.com.au and that's creative H-A-R-D-T com.au like my last name um, and please obviously if you want to get a butterfly effect book for yourself head on over to 
Jane's website at janedavenport.com and if you're in the US and um, Canada, you can pick all of Jane's new mixed media art supplies up at Michael's. So that's from me, it from me. Have a great day. Bye.